All right, now we're going live. Yay! <laughs> Here we are. Okay, hello everyone. Kim McIntyre here, Mawai, and we are talking about our Atlas and Axis and what the heck are those and how the heck do they affect our entire life, literally our entire life when they are out of alignment. Uh, so we'll wait here just for a couple minutes just to see if anyone wants to chime in and join in the conversation. There it is. Boom. All right. Perfect. All right. I think everything is wonderful. And we're just going to check a couple more things here. Boom. All right. We're good to go. So, yes, the Atlas. And the reason we're talking about this today is because mine, I discovered yesterday, has been out for a long time. Now, last week or this week earlier, I did a live about finding your personal power. And I was excited because I was finally able to move my pelvis and I was out of pain. Uh, but then I went and made the mistake of doing some squats with some weights and to prove that I was out of pain and, you know, fill my ego and woohoo, I did it. And it brought me back into pain. <laughs> it, it sucks. It sucks being in pain. It takes away, it takes everything away. It takes everything that you have in order just to, just to live your regular life, much less get up out of bed, right? And so yesterday, uh, as I was in pain again, pain meaning not just pain around my hips and, and pain in my head, but also I can't put my socks on, I can't put my underwear on, I can't get my pants on without compensating in one way. I can't bring my knee or could not bring my knee to my nose or knee up far enough to go get my sock around the bottom of my foot. And uh, that that has a tendency to wear on a person, right? <laughs> As some of you may know, who have had their atlas or axis out of alignment, or anything for that matter. Just getting some noise on here for my daughter so she doesn't have to listen to what we're saying. And as we work here, of course, it doesn't connect properly. There we go. All right. Oh, criminy sakes. There we go. Boy, I'm just all over the place today, aren't I? <laughs> all right. So let's look at the atlas. Mm -hmm. Here we are, Atlas and Atlas, pain and symptoms. And I found some pretty cool information this morning as I was searching my own healing process. So let's see, pain and symptoms of the Atlas or Atlas being out of alignment. More so the Atlas, but the Axis will be involved. So we'll start with pain and symptoms. Headache and migraines. All right, deafness, tinnitus, noise in the inner ear, pain in the jaw, neck pain or stiff neck, extreme muscle stiffness and restricted shoulder movement, pain, back pain in the lumbar spine as well as hip pain and pelvic misalignment, balance disturbances and uh, dizziness, that's supposed to be, say dizziness, D-I, <laughs> due to functional disorders in the inner ear, nausea or difficulty maintaining concentration. And this is from a chiropractor in Germany. 
And if I remember right, um, the chiropractor I used to see for my Atlas problems, Dr. Party here in Gardnerville, Nevada, he learned from that from that lineage from Germany, if I remember right. Don't quote me on that. Um, so I was I've been having all of these and they've been getting, been getting progressively worse. I have not had experience of deafness, uh, but the noise in the inner ear, uh, slight pain in the jaw, neck pain and stiff neck definitely uh, can turn to one side and not so far to the other, although that's a hell of a lot better today. Extreme muscle stiffness down my entire spine into my hips. Uh, the back pain, it put me in a crying fit twice. Um, and as I said this, this past week, I believed that it came from my sacrum being misaligned, which it did, but that was not the root cause. My atlas being out of alignment was the root cause. That was the one linchpin that knocked everything down. And then my balance to services, um, I wasn't dizzy, but uh, kicking, kicking things, hitting my head, that should have been my first clue because I've known that forever, but sometimes we forget the old tools in the bottom of our toolbox, right? They get shuffled down and you forget your old patterns. So I'm very glad I'm not going to be hitting my head anymore because if you've ever had your atlas out, if you've had a, ever had a concussion or whiplash and you go and hit your head, it just makes matters worse, right? Uh, let's check in here and see if anyone... And by the way, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to uh, write a little something in the comments here and we can answer anything that I have availability to. All right, so let's go on back. Boop, 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 boop. Here is your atlas and axis. Okay, this is your occiput. This is the bone on the back of your skull. Okay, and now this little guy right here, this is your atlas. And as you can tell, it kind of looks different than all of these other ones. It's very thin. There's no vertebral body to it. It doesn't rest on the, the spine per se like the, other, the others do on the vertebral body. And according to what I've learned in the past, it likes to move with the occiput. Now the axis, as we'll see on the next video here, is like a puzzle piece. This little bone up in here slides right up in between here, and this is where the occiput rests. Okay, that bone fits up in there, and they like to move together. They don't. They don't want to articulate so much. And so, if you have a miscommunication between one or the other because of a whiplash, a head injury, a concussion, or even a problem down the body that has worked its way up, up, then you're going to be putting pressure on nerves, on muscles, on the spine itself. So this is the difference between the, now the axis and atlas are not on here, but you can see the difference between the cervical bones uh, C3 through 7, the thoracic bones, 12 of them, and the lumbar bones. Lumbars are made for stability. They do not like to move a whole bunch, okay? Thoracic bones, made for movement and stability. So they're a little bit smaller, okay? And then your cervical vertebrae made for lots and lots of movement. My, one of my teachers in the Rolf Institute had a nice analogy. He said, if, if these lumbar vertebrae looked like these, we wouldn't have it as much stability. And when we'd run, we'd, we'd look like a, one of those uh, air, air, person, air people that try to get your attention. <laughs> now we're looking at muscles that attach to the, the atlas and at axis, as well as the occiput and bones surrounding the area. And these are our major culprits for uh, getting the pain around the head, for causing possibly causing the misalignment due to um, 
trigger points within them. A trigger point is a tightness that'll cause the muscle to tight, possibly due to a, a miscommunication from the brain. A muscle can lengthen out. It won't have that ability to contract when it needs to because it's not receiving sig signals from the brain. There may be, again, a misalignment due to an injury or uh, some uh, misalignment from down below that it's worked its way up. Now, one thing interesting I saw earlier today is, let's see, we're going to go to Google. There we are. And get that out of my way. Move. There we go. How can that small muscle cause so many problems? And we're talking about this little guy right here, rectus capitis major. Uh, it does not connect to, into bones like most, most muscles do. It looks like it connects to the occiput, but it doesn't. It called, connects to a piece of tissue called the myodural bridge. And that's this guy right here. All right, and that myodermal bridge, oh shoot, my thing it keeps getting away. My myodermal bridge goes into the dura mater of the wrapping around of the brain. Okay, that's uh, tissue that surrounds the brain, keeps the cerebral spinal fluid in, and it's a continuous all the way down the spine to the end of the tailbone. And if you think about it, those nerves that come out of the spinal column, they're connect they're surrounded by myelin sheath also also so as your cerebral spinal fluid pumps up and down the body you're having spinal fluid all the way down to those tips of your toes tips of your fingers if you really go in deep and so if that rectus capitis posterior is tight pulled to one side and and stretching on the other has a trigger point in it you're going to be having Pain in the brain, disconnection in your thinking processes, which makes you bump your head, kick things when you know that they're there because you've walked around your house 10,000 times. Uh, the inside of the belly is small muscle or abnormally large amounts of proprioceptors called muscle spindles. Proprioceptors help provide feedback in the brain about joint position and movement. So you can imagine if, one, if that bone is cocked to the side, it's going to be putting too much information and not enough information into that brain because of that severe stretch or lack of connection. Changes in this muscle can deform the myodermal bridge which, contain, which changes movement in cerebral spinal fluid. Abnormal movement in fluid is associated with headaches. That's very, very interesting information, new information for me in my journey with my atlas. My atlas journey started when I was, I believe, a junior in high school. My dad took me to Dr. Party for the first time, and he's got this medieval contraption. He lines you up in it, and it just hits your atlas to bring it into alignment in relation to what he feels. And I did not know that I could not see every... I didn't know that my world was, was blurry before I got that adjusted. And I stood up and I was pretty dizzy because it had been out for quite a while. And it's like everything changed. My entire vision changed, the tightness in my head changed that I didn't know was there, right? And this, hap this, this happened uh, once when a young boy came in to work with me. Uh, he, was, he was very skeptical. And his parents brought him in because he was, you know, complained of being in pain all the time. And who's this weird guy gonna gonna be working on me? And when he stood up from the table, he said, "I did not realize that I was in that much pain because he felt so much better." So that was that was really that was really a cool day. So now there's other muscles that attach to this area. Oh, there's that myodermal bridge we were talking about. 
Okay. So look at all of these muscular attachments. <clears throat> we have anterior scalene muscles. We have logissimus, front of the neck here. Oh, excuse me. See that rectus capitis lateralis attaching right behind your styloid process, which is way up in there. So the bottom of your occiput, I believe that's the occiput, don't quote me on that. But you can tell with all these attachments here, longus capitis, okay, he touches down the back, yep, yeah, the back of the spine. Wow, so much information. There it is. Longus capitis. C3, C4, C5, C6, up to the occiput. So you might have, you might put your hand in the back of your head there and, and rub your head, hand back and forth. And if you've got a bump, you know it may be that longus capitis. Of course, uh, I'm losing all those, all those wonderful muscle names. It wouldn't, it's not levator. My apologies. Boy, boy, dude. It's okay. So if this atlas gets out of alignment due to a head injury, neck injury, whiplashes, concussions, it can start a chain reaction down the front of the body. Then you might be having shoulder pain because the scalenes are tightened. Because the front of your neck, for that matter, the levator scapulae rotating the shoulder up. Now we've got pressure upon this uh, cranial nerve 11 that runs down the side of the shoulder blade. Anybody ever had that popping in the shoulder? That's, oh, I still got a little bit on this left side here. Which, in as this pulls up, Due to tightness, restriction, notice its attachments up here. We're going to be affecting the rhomboid major minor trapezius attaches here all the way down. Trapezius is going to be start tightening up or compensating around that. Uh, this nerve that runs into the uh, top of the shoulder blade here and down into your infraspinatus may start tightening up, which is going to affect your throwing, going to give you possible pain in the front of the shoulder. So you rub in front of your shoulder all the time, even though it's this muscle, this nerve here that's firing up that muscle, coming all the way up from its, excuse me, its origin up in the neck due to the atlas being out of alignment. And then, depending on how long your atlas has been in alignment, you'll see changes in the ligaments. Also, ligament tight on one side and stretched on the other side. So even if you go and get an adjustment just one time, because of the tightness over here, work that adjustment may not stay. And I experience this quite often. I would actually I would actually intentionally try to go crash and hit my head when I was snowboarding to try to get my atlas back into place because I wasn't around Dr. Purdy at the time and didn't know anybody else and didn't search for anybody else. And so I would go up there whenever I could. So you'll see here there's an artery underneath this ligament. So if that ligament's tightening and it's pushing, pinching off that artery, if I can... I can't see what artery it is, but it's going to be affecting your brain, blood flow to the to the brain. And now these are trigger points from the suboccipital muscles, those muscles we saw on the back of the head. So if you feel like, like you've got a band around your head of headache, if your vision has changed, getting blurry, if you've got that tinnitus in your ears, right, which is also going to change your sense of balance, you know you may have an atlas or axis imbalance. But 
Remember, that's not the only thing that has to be addressed here, depending on how long it's been out. So we've got, oh my goodness, what is, pardon me here, I'm going to look this up so that, there we come. There's my picture. All right. Semispinatus, semispinalis capitis, semispinalis capitis, sternocleidomastoid in the front there. Those are the two I was looking at. So they attach, again, lower cervical spine up into the occiput, upper cervical spine up deep into the occiput. So those guys are going to be affected by the atlas being a lemon because we our nervous system wants to keep its head on straight so if your atlas is cocked to the side we're going to force muscles here in order to get it to work and now it just it doing that i've got pain here around that compensation so as i release that the pain immediately goes away so we're cocked to the side and we force that up again immediately pain comes back here which in turn can affect the sternocleidomastoid, right? The trapezius being shortened to one side, always lengthened to the other, okay? Uh, the temporals, what do we do when we're in pain? We're constantly clenching, right? So temporal's gonna get uh, trigger points in them. Masseter is gonna get trigger points in them. All of these muscles need to be addressed. Now you can address these on your own. I don't know if you can address the atlas on your own unless you can move energy like I can. And that's how I did it. I did this yesterday. For an hour I laid on the living room floor, moving my head back and forth, working on this side, balancing everything out, balancing the cranium around it, moving it to the other side for an hour. Ended up passing out at the end of it because it was such a lot of work nervous system wise. Uh, but came out of it and this morning put on my underwear and I had maybe 10% pain left which means I've got a little more balancing to do but I'm well on my way very exciting uh, this is the trigger point therapy workbook this was my guide back in the day when I was a massage therapist and it helped me out tremendously but the problem was I was never getting getting to the source and that's why I was grateful that I went to the Rolf Institute because it helped me get closer to the source. Not to say that Rolfing is the end all be all, it's great. And in my body, a lot of my pain and misalignment had to do with held emotions, uh, out of balance chakras, meridians that are out of balance, and especially the cranial imbalances due to all of the trauma that I had put myself through being a snowboarder and trying to fly through the air and not knowing how to live in the air. <laughs> All right, so let's get a little check here. There we go. All right. So let's go back up here. So I think that concludes my talk about the atlas and axis. So if you have experienced whiplash, concussions, uh, new to jumping on a trampoline, which is what I believe caused this in the first place because I'm still not smart enough to keep my feet on the ground and I wanna play with my daughter and unfortunately doing new things on the trampoline. I did crash a few times and those crashes will mimic crashes from my snowboarding days, my skiing days, my mountain biking days. Not to say that I'm done doing those things, but I don't crash like I used to. Occasionally it happens. Before it would happen 30, 40, 50 times a day, which can really lead to some trauma. And if you hold on to that trauma, and you experience something like it in the future, 
it might bring that trauma back up from the past. I experienced this one day when I put a floating raft onto the lake and I ran from the uh, beach and jumped and landed flat onto the floating raft. It sent me into a little tailspin. It took me quite a bit of time to get out of that. Even though I was on a raft and on water, these things are both soft, because of the flat impact that I had taken uh, due to witch trauma snowboarding, right? It sent my nervous system into chaos. And that was not... The beginning of the day was fun. The rest of the day was not a good time. So taking care of your past so that when you do something in the future that resonates with the past, you won't go into that nervous system chaos again. Nice. So a card I picked up today for everybody is Full Moon. And it's about completion. So let's read Full Moon. And if you'd like to, you can tap along with this. I will join you. Every 29.5 days, Grandmother Moon shines bright and full in the sky, illuminating the landscape, landscape and her muted brilliance with her mu muted brilliance casting a delicate canopy over the sky and physical features on Earth. Having gradually etched her way over the last two weeks to fullness, she now stands like a guiding beacon in the night. She has completed her, this round of her perpetual and periodic monthly journey and will now start her slow but steady retreat into shadow. In this card, we see the grandeur of the moon at its peak, blaring blazing brightly and creating a silhouette of a tree. This beautiful orb reminds us that all cycles have their time of completion and fulfillment, one that will inevitably be followed by a decrease until yet another cycle is initiated. You can now take pleasure in knowing that whatever you have been working toward has now reached its culmination. It may have been a relatively brief cycle or a much more extensive one Yet regardless of the length of time you have arrived at the stage of completion, let yourself feel the contentment and satisfa satisfaction of this accomplishment. It is like when you take a deep breath and reach the point where your lungs are pleasantly full and your body is ready to release its breath. It is important not only to enjoy this completion, but also let go and allow yourself to relax afterwards, just like exhaling slowly and consciously. People are much too eager to rush to the next item on their goal agenda without giving proper time and space to appreciating and honoring the natural cycle of release that follows a point of resolution. Give yourself that time to relax and rest before tackling spirit's next assignment. Very important for me to hear. I have a tendency to have so many thoughts, so many ideas, so many things on my mind, and I never celebrate the completion. And I get overwhelmed, so I stop in the middle of the next step. So acknowledging, right, where your imbalance are, what do I need to do to bring my imbalance back to myself, back to balance, right? So that my body can function, my mind can function, my spiritual connections can function easily and effortlessly without compensation. <laughs> we don't want to compensate. That's where aches and pains come from. That's where dis-ease and disease comes from. So let's stop doing that. Simple enough, right? <laughs> so I hope you enjoy, enjoyed today. Uh, remember, today will last for an eternity. So you can work on today whenever you feel the need that you not need balance. Be sure to subscribe to my page so you can receive updates on any new videos that come up. Everything and anything might be relative to you. Uh, you can follow me on KimMcIntyre.com 
And if you have any questions or comments about today's video, feel free to leave them below. I would really appreciate reading those compliments or comments and compliments for that matter. All right. I hope you have a wonderful day.